again, again. We will not, we cannot, we must not tolerate it. It will be because of people like you who have stood with us today that have heard the clarion call that says that there is injustice hanging around. And with you bridged with our neighbors, it will never and can never have its right. You and I together can make a stand. We are the people that can do it. Aren't we? We are a strong Portland. We will not be drowned out again. We are a strong community. We will not be blighted out again. We are a resilient community that will stand beyond the placarding and the situational uh, uh, encroachment of our titles and our deeds. We can do this. Yeah. We're calling on Mayor Wheeler and the Board of Commissioners yes. to stop yeah. this process now. Yeah. We're calling on Mayor Wheeler and we're calling on all of the commissioners to reset the table and invite all that are necessary to have a voice in freedom. We can say together in the immortal words of our great and ferocious leader, Dr. Martin Luther King, we will always remain free in this society where we have a choice to stand together and together we can lift our voices and say that we're free and we're free at last and we'll continue to be free and be free at last and we can thank God Almighty that we're free and we're free at last. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We're so happy to have had you. Thank you so much. God bless you. White letters. Call. Tell them to stop this. So here is everyone.
There's a guy I want to talk to. So I got a question for you. Are they going to do this to residential houses too? Eventually, yeah. Eventually? Eventually. Okay, because my dad has a house that was built in like 1912. Oh yeah, eventually. <laughs> you know, eminent domain ain't no joke. Yeah, I know that. And if they did it to us, they'll do it to you. Yeah, and, and my concern is like, um, we still have that, you know, the old freezer thing where, where they used to put the um, dry ice into... Oh yeah, that yeah. used to call the ice box. Yeah. <laughs> that's where we get that old stuff and, into ice and, box. And, and in the basement, we still have the... Um, um, we need to, yeah, pick a spot, maybe right here, just for the media to gather. And in the in the basement, we we still have the uh, potato lockers. Wow! And then you have you had those cold beds that come in. Uh huh. I'm doing so well, I can't stand it. How about you? Oh, uh, pretty good. Good. So I think we were obviously we were going to uh, get a suit for the safe They want us to
owner but I own one of the buildings. Oh you are? No. Yeah. Like and, one of the Rickers or URMs as they call them. Okay, and you said it I just I thought I heard you say it cost you a hundred thousand dollars to fix that? Well I just did my roof this fall. So mm -hmm. I put on a new membrane roof and with the seismic upgrades so I'm in compliance with current code. The seismic component cost me about sixty, sixty five thousand but my seismic contractor says that if I were to do go to full retrofit of the whole building, which basically would be a, you'd either build a steel cage around the building or inside the building, mm -hmm. would be probably 800 to 1.2 million. So I, that's just not economically feasible. No. Nick Fish gets it the most. He's studied this the most. And he introduced a resolution to totally take this off the table until they can find some source of funding that would help people, you know, which is what Seattle has done. Yeah. And interestingly, in the last 10 or 15 years, in San Francisco, there was so much clamoring for more housing uh, they started issuing permits with for high-rises with no no real seismic 
them because you know they wanted more, more, more reasonable rents. Yeah, I mean the thing is, if you put these businesses through hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars, then they got to raise their prices to cover their losses. And my understanding, once you're on the list of uh, not safe for an earthquake, then you can't get loans or anything else. Yeah, it's it's brutal. 